Said have got um, a relationship with Shelley Finkel better so than, than Eddie has. Difficult to have a worse one, I would think. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, Shelley's his own man as well, and Shelley's not. You know, I mean, Shelley wouldn't do me a favour, and I wouldn't do him a favour. So sometimes discussions take place that neither side really wants. I mean, Eddie, Eddie, and Anthony Joshua would fight Deontay Wilder on September 22nd. I, personally, my advice was, let's leave it two years. Because then, out of the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight got built, you know, in commercial terms, Deontay Wilder and AJ today is a $70 million fight, maybe 80. In two years' time, it might be 250, 300 million dollars. Well, there's a greater risk of, in two years' time, one of them fighters getting beat. Which... That's where your judgment comes in and say, do I see anyone out there to beat either of them? No. Could it happen? Yes. If it happens, okay. That was a bad call. But you know, life's about making calls. It's not about sitting still, it's not taking chances. So, I think Shelley Finkel wanted to cash in on Deontay Wilder straight away. That's my honest view. He wanted to fight straight away. That's crazy. Isn't this crazy? And Shelley knows better than that, unless he didn't fancy winning the fight and thought we'd better get some money out of it. That's a possibility. We, we, don't, we don't have that concern with AJ. Have you, have you had any further conversations with Shelley Finkel? No, since no I wouldn't have a no. conversation unless Eddie told me to, because he's in charge. Uh, I'm happy to be there if necessary, and I'm sure post Fury Wilder, if it happens, would be a good time to talk again. But when you plan a business that's got a 10-year lifespan, you don't rush it. You know, I said to AJ, he, he asked me my honest opinion, I said, if you told me you were going to retire in six months' time, I'd tell you to fight Deontay Wilder now. If you tell me you're here for the long run, i say you, that fight can only get bigger. And also, you don't take chances. You don't go to the other bloke's backyard when you don't need to. The so, money is insignificant different. So if it's your personal preference, you would choose for AJ to fight him in two years' time from now? Two years would be the maximum. The most likely thing for me would be fall 2019. Okay. I think by then, I mean Deontay Wilder's done a very good job of making himself famous on the back of all this AJ and Fury and all that. And that's good news for everybody because no one knows or no one knew Deontay Wilder in America. More people know him now. And AJ is unknown in America, largely. And in a year's time more people will know him. And that fight is an automatic one to be built. And then the money is the difference between three or four hundred thousand buyers on pay-per-view in America and one and a half million buyers. Mm. It's a colossal difference. The UK market is already mature and we do what we do and there's not a massive upside because AJ is so big. You can't do more than sell out Wembley. You can't do more than one and a quarter, one and a half million pay-per-view buyers. So where's your upside? The upside is internationally, as more people know Joshua, we're doing an outstanding job on his international television, and the US pay-per-view. The Dazzin operation is also going to be a big plus because the marketing they can bring behind AJ in America will be colossal. So I'm, I'm very happy, but look, worst case scenario, if AJ's unbeaten for 10 years and doesn't fight Deontay Wilder, I'll take that. Um, obviously the, the contract situation has become, from a kind of fan point of view, a little bit stale and it's dragged on a lot. Oh, it's, all, it's all nonsense anyway. Look, at the end of the day, I don't think they really wanted to fight. You know, the fact is, if you want to fight, I, I mean, Eddie will say, we weren't sure about the money. And we weren't sure about the money, especially when we read that Shelley asked Frank Warren to help him out getting the money, according to Frank. So, but when we send them the contract, they, they never, even if they disagree with every line, they never came back with one written comment on the contract, which we signed and sent to them. AJ signed with us, and we signed with them. So everyone outside was totally committed. Now they may not like the terms and conditions, so if they were serious, they would say so. In writing, say, well, we don't like this clause, or we don't like that clause, but we like that. You know, that, that's how these things evolve. They've never responded, so you know, at the end of the day, whether it's ego or whether it's sensibility, I don't know, but 
I think it's, it's, it's one that will be revisited and it will depend on if the Fury fight happens, that's a big fight and I think that will broaden the base for, for Deontay Wilder. I don't give Fury a big chance in that fight, I think it's much too early for him, my own personal feeling, no, no disrespect to either man, I think it's much too early for Tyson Fury. Um, but but fair play to him if he, you know, if the, the fight. No, no, fair play, he's taking a payday, that's, that's okay, that's, that's happened before in boxing, they've offered him some money and he's short-circuited the career that he had outlined that made sense. He's been out for two and a half years. I mean, let's be honest, he's a fighting man, so he tells me, but doesn't fight. You don't punch, you don't fight. He will get that courage and confidence back in time, but the last fight, I mean, Dianetta's ranked 146 on box wrecks in the world. I mean, if you're a top, top heavyweight, those type of people just don't last with you. I mean, you can't say you, you wanted to get the 10 rounds. <laughs> That's a nonsense. Every fighter wants to get other fighter out of the ring. But, listen, he's made his mind up and I wish him all the, way, all the best. And I think from a business decision, it's not a bad call for Tyson, really, from business, not from boxing. He gets beat by Deontay Wilder. He can still fight Joshua later on. He gets beat by Joshua, he may never fight Deontay Wilder. So it's two paydays instead of one, and hats off to him. That's, that's good management. The big man's in town. That's not Joshua, that's you, Barry. Oh, I'll tell you what. This is, uh, this is fantastic. And that's off. My son's done me again, hasn't he? 40 years in this business. I've never promoted a man to Square Gardens. He's done me again. He's got the bragging rights in the Hearn household. And I'm very proud of him and the team. And I'm thrilled, thrilled to be here tomorrow night. For not just Anthony Joshua, by the way. I think the whole card looks a real credit to British and American boxing. Then we're in for a treat. Barry, obviously the, the, the criticism around this fight was kind of not the whether Ruiz can fight or not, we know he can fight, it was the, the shape he kind of, he's in shall we say. Um, he's, been, he's been in that shape most of his professional career, yeah. he is what he is, and by the way only ignorance doesn't look at a man's record and past achievements. It's easy to look at someone and make a, a quick decision when you don't know anything. When you know a little bit about boxing you'll recognise this guy can fight. I watched the Parker fight, I thought he probably won it but he was away from home. It's his only loss. He's looking, he's got the whole weight of the Mexican population on his shoulders. He wants to be the, he wants to it. This is a life changing fight for him. And if you write him off, it just makes you stupid. It doesn't make anyone else different. Some people are built like Anthony Joshua and they can't fight. Some people aren't and they can fight. Get into your thick heads. He did state yesterday that things go well for him on Saturday night. He wants to sit down with Tyson Fury. He wants to get in with Tyson Fury and say, what do you want? What, what needs to happen? Listen, I'd be delighted to see anything happen that makes a fight. Being the old cynic that I am, we're all wasting our time. Tyson Fury does not want to fight Anthony Joshua. He'll just ask for 50-50 and Anthony won't give it to him. So it's a very short sit down. Deontay Wilder does not want to fight. Anthony Joshua. He couldn't wait to rush out the story that he's boxing all test so that no one asked him any questions. You know, let's not bullshit around. Joshua is the supreme number one. The only other person that's got a belt or title of any description is Deontay Wilder. Anthony wants to fight him, Tyson Fury or anyone else. He's not a problem. But you have to live in a real world. It takes two to fight. So you weren't surprised at all about the pre-announcement about the no, Tactical naivety. Some little, some little bloke had an idea. Let's get our news out first, and that'll stop them asking you about when you're fighting him. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I'll fight Ortez again. That's a decent fight. Ortez not a bad fight. Ortez a good fighter. But the fight the public want to see. I'm sorry to say to the public because you know me. I only speak the truth. They're gonna have to wait because it's not gonna happen. And you're not optimistic about Fury either. No. no. While ESPN, in the ultimate wisdom, are paying Tyson Fury a lot of money to fight not really great fighters, let's put it mildly, you can't blame Tyson for taking easy money. Why not? Fair enough. Wouldn't we all? Fair enough. So what does he want to go and take marginally more money and get knocked spark out by Anthony Joshua for? It's not good business, is it? Mm. Does Dylan White put himself back in the mix oh, again I'm this so year? I'm so pleased with Dylan. Yeah. He's back. 
Yeah. He's back, and if he gets the mandatory against Deontay, which I believe he will, yeah. he's got a tough fight in July 20th against Rivas. If he gets past that, and he could be the mandatory, then you've got a real fight, unless someone runs away from him. But yeah, they're not going to run away, because Deontay's not going to vacate his title. He will fight Dylan White. Mm. And that's a great fight to look forward to. And don't worry about Anthony, he's fine. He's always going to be there as the number one, and he's ready and willing to fight anyone when they're ready and willing to fight. Yeah. But beyond that, we can only just speculate. Absolutely. Just finally, Barry, can you just kind of make some comment? Obviously, I didn't speak to you after that, but the press conference that you hosted... I'm going great, great. Right. Right. Um, there was some controversy listen, over some of your comments that listen, you made. only controversy if you took it out of context. It is an indisputable fact for anyone who knows anything about boxing that fighters have never really been treated properly from day one. This is why Joe Louis ended up as a greeter in a, one of the greatest fighters of all time in a Las Vegas casino. This is why fighters, when they sign long-term contracts, as soon as the contract's over, they run away and do their own thing. The world has changed, and I personally am delighted, and I think I've been part of that change. Fighters are now the governors, as they always should have been, but weren't. And if you can make any more of that, or tell me that's not true, you are a numpty. Did you see why people would have taken no. the or not, not at all? They took it out of context. Yeah. The fact that I'm sitting next to Dylan White, a black man, I wasn't talking about black or white. All fighters were slaves. The, slaves is probably a colourful word. But the fact is, they didn't control their own destiny. They weren't treated with enough respect. And today they are, and we welcome that change. If you haven't got a knowledge of the history of boxing, shut the fuck up. Barry Hearn, thank you very much. I'm going to enjoy the rest of the way and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Good man. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? There's Big Porky here. And what a time to be alive, eh? Woo! 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 Andy Ruiz, baby! I got it wrong, didn't I? I said Ruiz would get knocked out in round one. I lost my bet, and my business partner had a bet on round two. She lost her bet. We lost our money. I got Tommy Coyle one right, though, didn't I? And I got the Josh Kelly one right, but they gave it a draw. I got the Katie Taylor one wrong. So... That's just boxing, isn't it? But uh, quick video, because I'm uh, meeting my pal Foggy to uh, have a few frames and a few jars, as you do. The aftermath. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna come out with things like. Uh, what's the word? I'm not gonna come out with stuff where I'm gonna say that. Uh, I'm glad Anthony Joshua got beat and blah de blah and I'm not going to kick a man down while he's down. I'm going to fucking stamp on him while he's down and Eddie Hearn. They don't give a fuck about anybody. They don't give a fuck about anybody except themselves. They've had it coming, haven't they? So as far as I'm concerned, they can fuck off. They can fuck off as far as I'm concerned. Now Eddie Hearn... Eddie Hearn's got a... A rematch clause. Now, we aren't me having a look at that contract because I am a bit of an expert with contracts. We aren't me having a look at the contract. Uh, we can only surmise now. I'm going to surmise that it's a 70 30 split for Andy Ruiz because he were. He were, he were more or less begging for the fight. I'm going to surmise it's a 70 30 split, the rematch, and it's an immediate rematch. But does a unification fight with the WBC, does that supersede a rematch? I don't know. You'd have thought it would like, because if it the suited Eddie Hearn, he'd have been, uh, he'd have been superseding things, wouldn't he? Hey, good old Eddie Hearn. Uh, but Joshua, stay humble. Now, 
as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to come out with all that Tyson Fury. Oh, you know, keep giving it all that you'll come back and all this and blah de blah and being nicey nice because Tyson loves a PR opportunity to say something, doesn't he, to make it sound look positive. But Tyson Fury will be pissing his knickers at the moment at what happened last night. He won't be saying, oh, I've missed out on a payday and all this. He'll be laughing his bollocks off. So will Billy Joe Saunders. So were a lot of people in boxing in the So are people who were pundits on the night. They're laughing. I'm not going to say who. But they were all laughing. All glad as well. Majority of them. And that's just boxing industry, is it? That's how it is. And I'm glad as well. And if anybody's got a problem with that, get in touch with me. Don't ring me on a withheld held number, though, like some of these rats do. Give me a ring. And we'll speak on FaceTime if you've got a problem. But this is how I look at it. I am glad Anthony Joshua got smoked. He got smoked. Now, they've rubbed a lot of people up wrong way. He's at the weigh-in. Did you hear the background music at the weigh-in? We all under armour this on and, you know, and, and beats headphones and... And watch and all this, Audemars watch and all that crap. Walking billboard. And big 70% or wherever it is, cut at rematch. So, look, he's a money making machine, isn't he? That's all he is. And that's why I don't like to see. I mean, am I going to just say, oh, I feel sorry for Anthony Joshua? I feel really sorry for him. He got knocked the fuck out. No, I'm not. Because I think, well, stub up. They put pay-per-view up. We've now got more pay-per-views. They're charging extortionate prices. And you've got to look at it like this as well. If that referee had stopped it in round three when Joshua dropped Ruiz, do you know what would have happened? We'd have all kicked and screamed, wouldn't we? But we would have all said, we yeah, would have got to him anyway. He would have got to him. And we'd have all forgot about it by fucking Tuesday, wouldn't we? And then it'd have been another angle, another angle for him to hold on to the belt another six months. Do you know what I mean? And fight Pulev, another another one from Bum City. That's what would have happened. You see where I'm coming from? That is what would have happened. But it didn't happen, did it? And Ruiz got up and he dealt with him, didn't he? Now, as far as I'm concerned, I hope Andy Ruiz has an injury before rematch and then Joshua... Being the greedy bastard that he is and his promoters, they're going to say, well, we did an interim fight because we've already got the date filled cause, and Eddie will have a plan B, so they'll wheel Joshua out against somebody or he'll blow away. And what will happen, happen then is, hopefully, Al Heyman will say, well, you had an interim fight, well, we need one now. And they'll fight Wilder then. And they'll get Wilder and Wilder will end up with all the belts. That's what I'm hoping. And then he'll keep them all, keep them away from them. And then Eddie Yearn, like I'm hearing they were talking uh, yesterday after the fight, they're on about doing this tournament. If that happens, they're going to do a tournament. <laughs> An heavyweight tournament. And they're going to start coming out with things like, it's not about the belts, it's about the fight. Joshua doesn't need a belt. That's what they're going to come out with. They're going to come out with setbacks, pave the way for comebacks, and even Ali lost, even Lennox, our best ever, lost. Setbacks pave the way for comebacks. Ali lost, and it's how you come back, and that's what champions do, and it is what it is, and it's not about belts, and I'm a big enough star. All that knackers, that's what you're going to hear, all that knackers, but the moral of the story is this. Who has Anthony Joshua be? Who is his best win? A life and death with Vladimir Klitschko. Second best win. Joseph Parker, the guy who beat Ruiz. But when Joseph Parker fought Joshua, the referee didn't let him fight his fight, did he? That last night, that referee, he let him get on with it, didn't he? He didn't keep jumping in, did he? Did you see it? He didn't keep jumping in, did he, like the referee in the Joseph Parker fight. Now, Joseph Parker will be kicking himself and not letting his hands go even more. And Dillian White will be kicking his hands even further, won't he? He'll be thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Dillian White, the man who turned down millions. Joshua were there for the taking, wasn't he? But, <clears throat> but like I said, 
Dillian White, Charlie Martin, Brazil, Melina, Klitschko, Takam, Parker, Povetkin, Ruiz. Sadly, a death row killers, are they? That's nine. Ruiz rematch, Joshua's 10th pay per view on trot. So, don't feel sorry for Anthony Joshua. After he fights Ruiz, he's probably worth in excess of 110 million. 110 million, he gets a private jet to fly all over the world. Dubai Tourism give him a free seven star hotel with a butler. All his mates that are around, did you see them all crying? Did you see them all crying? Hey. Hey, did you see, did you see that snivelling big six foot ten uh, bodyguard of his, that big stupid Neil? What a dosser he is. Did you see him? Oh, I love Anthony. Roaring. Cl Clarissa Shields, roaring. They're not roaring for Joshua. I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you why they're roaring, shall I? I'll tell you why they were upset. Yeah, if you've got a close friend, it's not nice. Seeing him lose a boxing match. But what about all them guys? Joshua's knocked out. He's knocked out 21 out of 23. Listen, that big stupid lurch, his bodyguard, right? He's thinking about himself. Because he goes around the world with Joshua on a private jet. Dubai and London and America. That's what sort of life he's got. Your meals on wheels, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? He's probably on about £1,500 a week. And all his food and digs paid for. Flying around world first class. He's on a good little number, him, isn't he? Hey, he bothered about himself, the same as Clarissa Shields. Look, Clarissa Shields, right, she's going to be looking to fight uh, Savannah Marshall on a Joshua undercard. That's the talk, isn't it, for end of year or beginning of next year. So the last thing she wants is Joshua to get beat against Ruiz in a rematch or, or there'll be any doubt that it might not happen, because... That fight might not, happen, not, might not happen now, Clarissa against Savannah. It might happen, but it might not happen on a Joshua undercard. Joshua could say, fuck it, couldn't he, and go, he's got enough money. Or he could say, fuck it, after rematch with Ruiz, he might beat Ruiz and fuck off, or might get beat again. Who knows? Who knows if he'll even have Ruiz at a rematch? Do you think Al Heyman's going to let them four belts go into a position where Eddie Hearn can get his paws on them after all that's gone on? Do you think Shelley Finkel and Al Heyman and all them lot are going to let that happen? How the fuck? Them belts are in America now, all five of them! Eddie Hearn went to America with all them belts. Are you telling me that they're going to let them just go over to England with them? With them dodgy refs in England and dodgy judges? How the fuck? With Eddie Hearn's judges? Did you see the Katie Taylor fight? She got levered! Katie Taylor got levered seven rounds to, to free, six rounds to free, sorry, with one shared. You could give seven free. I gave it six rounds to free and one shared. She got levered. Nobody in the building had it to Katie, Katie Taylor. Only Tony Bellew was saying it could have gone either way. He was the only one because he has to fly the match room flag. He's, he said he, he's, had, he's, he's an Eddie Rimmer, isn't he? Frotch, Johnny Nelson, Adam Smith. Macklin, Malignaggi, David A, they all said it was the other person. And Katie Taylor, how she, how she accepted that with a straight face, I don't know. She got leathered. Josh Kelly got leathered. Tommy Coyle got leathered. I like Tommy though, he's a warrior. But he gives good volume. But as far as I'm concerned, you don't honestly think that Al Heyman's going to do that. He's going to try everything. Look, the only people that are going to make any money out of this now... The lawyers. Lawyers are the only ones who are going to make any money out of this. Lawyers. Do you know what I mean? Just a bill on what after the free gift? Listen, Joshua, right? He had free gifts in, in London Olympics out of the four fights. Free gifts. And he's just had nine fucking pay per views on trot. And he's going to get a tenth. Like I said, all we're going to hear is setbacks pave the way for comebacks. You know, Wilder's come out and he, he, he's, he, you know, he's stuck it to him. So what? At least he's a man, isn't he? He's not come out like Tyson Fury trying to build a bit of PR off at back of it. Oh, goody fucking goody, Mary Poppins. Do me a fucking favour, Tyson. We all know what you're going to be saying behind closed doors, Tyson. So, come on, play the game, mate. Just come out and be, just be old Tyson. Just say it is what it is. He's a big weightlifter. And, you know, against somebody who had a bit of skill, they didn't know what to do. So, but the ref in the Parker fight was shocking, but that one last night was brilliant, wasn't it? 
That brilliant. He were a brilliant that referee. Brilliant, but it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. It's how boxing's going at the moment, isn't it? You know, nobody dare say a fucking word, dare they? Well, let me tell you this, right? Dennis was at IBF convention in China, and <laughs> Eddie Hearn's got no friends there. All them people that were there from boxing industry were all wetting the knickers, wetting them, but. You know, so, I mean, it has a, this is going to have a knock-on effect, this now, all the way through boxing. I mean, for example, for example, Fraser Clark, right? Fraser Clark is an amateur. He's been at GB team 9, 10 year, yeah? He's 28 in August. On his Twitter profile, it says he's 25. He isn't, he's 28 in a couple of months, right? Two months, he's 28. Are we entering an era now where boxers are more re materialistic about their ability where bo and boxers were not ready to come out of their comfort zone. Is that era we're entering now? Well, is Joshua coming out of his comfort zone? Nobody got found out last night, did he? Tyson's not coming out of his comfort zone. He did once and he won't again again. So you're not going to hear Wilder again. Wilder, is he coming out of his comfort zone? Well, two fights with Ortiz and if he does fight Fury next, yeah, he's coming out of his comfort zone, and if Tyson does go through it while the rematch he is, yeah, but I think that before last night, everybody were unimpressed, weren't they, with heavyweight division. Now, it's given us that bit of a zest, doesn't it? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's jazzed it up a bit, and Eddie Hearn's coming out saying, oh, I think it's great, all this, it's all exciting, we've got another player to the game and all that, listen. The papering over cracks, just like the eye with Ronnie O'Sullivan that's told Barry Hearn to fuck off, hasn't he? Barry's saying, go on then, go. He don't mean that. If Ronnie O'Sullivan goes, I can assure you, Snooker will be on its knees. If Joshua walked, he'd be on, its, he'd be on his knees, boxing with matchroom. Look, Eddie Hearn did a four minute, 58 second interview with IFL. And he mentioned the word rematch 17 times. Go and count them. He talked about a rematch 17 times, that's because they're desperate. They're desperate, they need that rematch. They need Andy Ruiz in England. And they're gonna have matchroom lawyers on retainers, which they do have all year round anyway. They'll have their matchroom lawyers on retainers and they'll be fighting Al Eamon to make sure that they stand up for that. But uh, as I've just said there, you know, fighters, you know, the, the, the more materialistic thinking about money than actual fights now. We know about Dillian White getting iced against AJ, but since then, we've heard a lot of talk, haven't we, from Dillian, but we've not had the AJ rematch. Now, Dillian White's got to be devastated, hasn't he, about that rematch, because he's not took it, has he? He didn't take the chance. Now, could have been quite easy for Dillian White to be at Wembley and Joshua were there for the taking and on that performance Joshua put in last night, Dillian White knocks him about, doesn't he? Makes a mess of him, beats him up, punches him upside down. But uh, but as this as this filtered down to amateurs, all this non-engaging in proper fights. I was looking at Fraser Clark's record today and he's 28 in August. He's a Commonwealth Games heavyweight, gold medalist. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, he's on a good thing there in GB team, isn't he? Five hundred pound a week net, lottery funded. You get all your meals, free Mercedes, all them facilities up there. You're at gym every day, and uh, you got you got all that, aren't you? Free place to live, free free place to stay, accommodation, free travel around the world, petrol, car insurance, car tax. You're on a good thing there. Now, as far as I'm concerned. It filters down, because Fraser might be thinking, well, why should I come back and turn pro? Sorry, why should I turn pro when there's Joe Joyce and all them and Joshua and Gillian White? I'm not going to get a slot, am I? So he's waiting it out. But he's 28 in August, and he needs to get a move on as far as I'm concerned. But it has a knock-on effect. Daniel Dubois, he realised that he could make, it, make a go of it in pros. Now, he dropped Joshua, so did a Coley. So did David Price, so did Dillian White in amateurs. Joshua is chinny, that's why he's never fought Wilder. He is chinny. Chinny, 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 chinny. 
protecting that, just like Tyson is. They're both chinny. He's been down five times, one against a non-puncher and one against a puncher in Vladimir, in pros. And to be honest with you, why, how do we all get carried away by the hype? Take the physique away, the physique, take that away. We all got carried away. Do you remember that heavyweight, Michael Grant? Go and watch him, Michael Grant against Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis was shitting his pants before he fought him. They had to drag Lennox Lewis to that fight, kicking and screaming. Like Carl Zaggy did against Jeff Lacey. A physique thing plays a part in a boxer's mind, they think, oh. Well, Michael Grant's got the Joshua physique, and look what happened to him. Big muscles like that need oxygen, don't they? Joshua looked like Frankenstein, didn't he, after one round? But, uh these fighters, these amateur top heavyweight amateurs and that, they need to be took out of the comfort zone. Joe Joyce is another one, he milked it, didn't he, up to being 33, 30, 30 or 31 or something, didn't he? He milked it till past his 30th birthday. And I've heard Fraser Clark's going to turn pro next summer after Olympics and, and he's 29 then. Is that a bit too late for a talented heavyweight? I don't know, but I wish him well. But I can understand. When you're seeing these guys not take these fights, you think, well, I'm all right here on X amount a week here. I've got a free car. I'm getting good money. I've got a job as a security person for, you know, Clifton Mitchell who does match room security and that. So I'm on a good number here. So why do I need to rock the boat? But you have to be took out of your comfort zone to be the heavyweight champion. Dillian White, has he come out in his comfort zone? Has he gone for it, really? I don't know. He's stalled, hasn't he? He's had bad advice. Dillian White's took bad advice. I don't know who was giving him it, but he's took bad advice. The person who was giving him the advice of turning down the heavyweight championship of the world at Wembley Stadium. <laughs> He'll have been watching that last night, Dillian White, and he'd have cried himself to sleep this morning about half five in the morning. He would have cried himself to sleep watching that. Miller would have cried his son to sleep. Miller. Yui Fury would have as well, because it could have been Yui, couldn't it, if he'd have beat Pulev. They might have sacked the they might have sacked the manager off and slipped Yui in as a replacement for Miller when Miller uh, failed drug test. Yui will be roaring. He'll be devastated. Martin Bacoli cut him, but everything happens for a reason, doesn't it? But uh, that's as far as I'm concerned. It has a knock-on effect on, on, on other fighters who, who up at EIS, well Fraser Clark trains up there, doesn't he? He'll train with Joshua and he, he'll, he'll know what Joshua can do, so maybe he might have been thinking I'll wait a bit and see how the landscape changes. Well the landscape is changing, isn't it? But I noticed how Eddie Earns pushing and pushing and pushing the word rematch and setbacks paved the way for comebacks. Look, if that's what they want to tell themselves, fair enough, but as far as I'm concerned, Ruiz as team are going to do their best to get out that. They're not going to want to come to the UK, are they? Could you imagine coming to the UK and having Phil Edwards as referee? Eh? Could you imagine that? Eh? Could you imagine that? Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. It is what it is, but. I was just looking at. Uh, I don't think I'll bring. I'm going to bring that up today. I will just keep that what I've done there now. Uh, I think we mentioned that, haven't we? So I, can I can throw them now. Throw that there. I must have my car validators. Oh, it's mint. I've been wheels done in black. I look mint. He's had the and playing Sky and the Zone off against each other. Uh, yeah, I think he is. I think he is, but I think Eddie Earn now, he's going to realise that without them belts, his deal with Dazone's not very strong, and you might start seeing Eddie Earn play a little bit of ball now with Sky. Uh, so maybe he might have that might have a knock-on effect for people. I don't know, but. Uh, Anthony Joshua's had nine pay-per-views. Two of them were two of them were good. That one last night were good. Good show that last night. Katie Taylor were robbed. 
they were very very good fights but he's had to do that hasn't he he's had to do that for american but he couldn't he couldn't do it for sky could he the wilder comments are they in bad taste no not really it's a bit of karma in it you know when you upset people on the way up you know when you come down then people remember don't they it's like I remember Eddie Hearn stealing uh, Jamie McDonnell off him. I mean, look at the people that J Eddie Hearn's got that were with Dennis Hobson. Jamie McDonnell. Well, Gav, with, Gav McDonnell with Dennis. I think he had, did he have one fight with him. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Dave Allen were with Dennis. Do you know what I mean? You've got to look at it like this, right? When you upset people, they remember, don't they? I'm one of them people. I believe in an eye for a fucking eye, mate. I believe in an eye for an eye. When I were in jail, if somebody upset me, I'd always get them, because you know what? You know when you're in that jail domain? And anybody who's been to jail will tell you this. Somebody upsets you and you don't deal with it. You're knackered, aren't you? You're knackered. I'll tell you a little story. We're going off key here, but... When I was 21, right, on my 21st birthday, I went from, there was a YP in all onto the men's side of the YP and there were a guy in there at the time called Paul Sykes and he was the hardest man in your in, in area, Paul Sykes. Google him, it's called Paul Sykes at large. Here in jail with me and in, on that video he's on, they did a documentary about him, he was an 8 and 1 fighter, heavyweight. He's squatting 220 kg or something, 240 kilo, 500 pounds. Squatting everywhere, he used to knock people out for fun. He set about gym staff with five kilo dumbbells, smashed their heads in. I was 20, what, 21st birthday, and he went landing. School come up to me and said, Just to let you know, because you've come over from YPs, don't lend anybody your radio because I had this new Sanyo ghetto blaster. I lent it to somebody to listen to it match because I thought I'll make friends. I went back for radio the next day because it's my radio now. And for a few days, I didn't do anything about it because I was like stunned. I thought, I said to my cellmate, what am I going to do here? He said, well, you, you've got to get it back, because if you don't, you know, you've got, you know, you got, you're doing a 19-month sentence. You've got, like, 10 months to go. I thought, well, what am I going to do here? And, the, the, and I were like, on me tod in all, I thought, you know what I did? Because I know I couldn't fight him. Whoosh! Scolded him, didn't I? It's a true story, that. That's just one true story, but... Or I've had some silver medals in there, but you have to stick up for yourself, don't you? And that's why Wilder stuck up for himself, himself, isn't it? Wilder stuck up for himself, and uh, he's he's stuck it, he's give it back to Eddie Earn, hasn't he? And I'm going to give it back to Eddie as well. Eddie, you've trampled on a lot of people. You haven't got the knackers to come on my channel, but you'll sit there with all your little cronies, Michelle Phelps, Rob Tebbett, Coogan Cassius, you know the three musketeers. You'll give them access, but you won't get anybody else. You used to come on Boxing Asylum and talk to Andy Patterson and Tommy the Guru Allen and all them boys, didn't you? Steve Wellins, Dave the Eighty Lowback, Smido and Ozzy. You'll speak to all them, won't you? But you don't. You won't go on their channel now, will you? Brian King and all them. You spoke to them, Eddie. You even had a meeting with them, but you won't. You won't give other people who stick it to you, it will. You won't give them time of day. So I ain't got no love for you, Eddie, whatsoever. You had it coming, and I hope that Al Eamon freezes you out. And he probably will, and you'll probably know what's going to happen, because you'd be doing the same thing if you were in that position, Eddie. You would, so don't say you wouldn't. You would. You would do the same thing. And that's just, that's just how... That's just how the cookie... That's just how the cookie crumbles. Do you know what I mean, Eddie? That is how the cookie crumbles. So, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, you're unlucky. You're un you're unlucky, mate. It's uh, it's one of them things. It's uh, it's just boxing, Eddie. I'm afraid it's boxing. You got your man got beat, and you've got a swallow now. You're on the outside looking in. Now, Mike Tyson, when he got beat up against Buster Douglas, 1990, February, he never got his belts back, did he, for uh, six and a bit year? Now, I know he spent three of them at Nick, but they did the best to freeze Don King out. Now, Bob Arum and all them lot, Eamon, Frank Warren, Lou DiBella, Shelley Finkel, these are big dogs in the game. Frank Warren's still a big dog. Everybody who said it, he were down and out, he's got... BT Sport on board, bigger than Sky, aren't they? I mean, who the fuck has Eddie Hearn got now? Who has he got? Let's look at his stable, but let's congratulate them from last night. Callum Smith, Andy Ruiz, 
Chris Algieri and Katie Taylor. Let's congratulate him, but Katie Taylor didn't win. Well done to Tommy Coyle, but you got beat. So it's tough at the top, Tom. But Josh Kelly, I'd like to see him fight Anthony Tomlinson. I think he gets beat. I think Anthony Tomlinson sets about him, punches him upside down. Do you know what I mean? Knocks him out. But, uh, but let's just take time out now to reflect on the evening. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shelly Finkel is a big dog. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. He is a big dog. They're going to do their best to freeze him out. That's just what happens. It is just what happens. It's boxing, isn't it? And Eddie knows that, and I can see Eddie here and doing a little tournament, an heavyweight tournament. You know, Michael Hunter, Jarrell Miller, he can play villain. Anthony Joshua, he can play Mr. Humble. Mr. Humble's here! Stay humble! Anthony Joshua, Mr. Fucking Humble, with his Audemars watch on 350 grand. Flying around world in a private jet with a six foot ten bodyguard and all his mates in tow. Living in seven star Dubai hotels, all paid for. Mr. Humble. Be humble. Just be humble. See where I'm coming from? You can't live like that and say be humble. Because it's bullshit. And then be knocking deals back to have certain fights with certain people. Because you want to take easy fights. Or you're offering people small money. Do you suddenly think people are not going to say, Fuck you. I'm glad you got beat. Because I'm going to say it. Fuck you. I'm glad you got fucking beat. You fucking mug. You fucking prick. Oh. It's just how I am. That's how I feel about it. It's how I feel about them fucking rats. Fucking stubborn. Fucking six and seven pay-per-views a year. Twenty pound a pop. And cancelling all streams when I'm in the middle of watching the bastard. And Frank Smith like that. Did you see Frank Smith on IFL? Yeah, they all fucking know now, don't they? First you're angry. Then you're upset. Then you look for somebody to fucking blame. That's what Joshua's going to do. He's angry. But he's keeping it calm. He's got to keep the old, let's stay humble. The best man won on the night. He's got to keep. He's got to keep that image up. That's what he's got to do. He's got to keep that image up. You know, Mr. Fucking Humble. I can assure you, deep, deep, deep down, all them people around Joshua. Let me tell you, they'll all be fearing for their fucking positions around him now. All them arse lickers, right, that knock around Joshua, right? And there's fucking loads of them. There's loads of arse lickers knock around with him. Big rimmers, I call them. They're all going to be now worried. Because, I mean, what do half of them fucking do? I mean, there's one of them that just films him from YouTube. One of them's got a job doing what I do, and he pays him X amount and gets to go all over with him filming him. Oh, set a YouTube channel up. You can film me. Be humble. What the fuck is all that? What the fuck is all that, eh? Well, well, I don't, I don't, I don't get that, me. I don't get it. And as far as I'm concerned, is he going to take my back end out him here? You took my back end out, love. All right. Silly cow. No, but uh, this, this is how I look at it, right? All them people that are hanging around Joshua now, right? Where, where are they going to go now? They've got no fucking pride about themselves. They're all like that. Apart from Frank Smith, all the rest of them are just fucking doormen, aren't they? Big doormen, or... Oh, he's his mate. Oh, it's his mate. Oh, you know, he's known him years. Give him a job. Just knock about with him and look tough in an Under Armour tracksuit. We'll all wear... I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll all wear the same tracksuit, and then we can be known as a crew. Well, let me tell you this. You know, in about two years, all that fucking shower of shit, you know what they'll be doing? They'll be serving fucking crack up in Watford. That's what they'll be doing. They'll be serving fucking ten of, ten of rocks a crack through a fucking letterbox. That's what they'll be doing. I know about all that kind of stuff, let me tell you. And that's what they'll be doing. 
them fucking lot were hanging around with him. Because Joshua, he's a very shrewd kid, very very shrewd kid. He ain't got to do what he, you, ain't, you can't do what he's what he's done without being a bit shrewd and. You know, he's very selective in how he, how he makes his move. I'm taking care of business. I'm handling my business. Well, you didn't fucking handle it last fucking night, did ya? Sorry about that. But no, I'm having my little fucking victory, aren't I? It's like fucking nicking a side of beef from kitchens and going up into your cell without getting a pull, in it? Little victories. But no, this is how I look at it, right? He's gonna he's gonna be thinking on that aeroplane, that private jet, on way back to England. Where did I go wrong here? And he's gonna look around him, he's gonna look at them all and he's gonna think. And this is what you do, you know, you think changes are needed. And you've already heard unsettlement in the camp, the old man, his dad, and Chisora's been spouting his mouth off to people, hasn't he? There's people around Joshua that are only there for themselves, isn't they? For starters, he's the champion. What's he doing in fucking America? I mean, it all affects you, these kinds of things, doesn't it? But that's how I look at it. And it is what it is, isn't it? Or it is what it is. Whatever it is, it's a fucking mess for the minute. But I hope he gets rid of a whole lot of them and, and gets, a, gets a new team around him. Obviously, fucking Eddie Hearn's going gonna be, gonna, gonna, to uh, be needed, isn't he, for Sky, but... I can assure you, I used to say you ain't just going to say fuck you, I'm going to go with old Fish Eyes Frank. Fish Eyes Frank will be fucking doing his best to get him, Bob Arum will be sniffing about as well. I can assure you, I can assure you this, right, let me tell you. They will be doing their best to get him away from them. But Joshua might be stupid enough to say he's going to take it on, on chin. It's his own fault and blah de blah. I mean, I mean, I, I, somebody told, somebody sent me a picture, didn't they, of his watch, the Audemars watch that he got robbed. They put a knife through Joshua's range over window, two o'clock in the morning in Battersea. Now I've got a photograph of his watch. There's only two in the world, and they got his watch, but he got paid out, didn't he, on insurance? Now. As far as I'm concerned, what's he doing out at 2am, week before he fights Povetkin? That's just how I look at it, unless he couldn't sleep and he went out for some fruit. <laughs> unless he went out in a weird gang of people for some fruit. But that's just how I look at it, mate, it, uh, p uh, people. It is what it is, innit? Look, the bubble's burst, on it? Take it on chin and move on, don't you? You take it on chin and you move on that's what you do but changes big changes are going to be needed around joshua now and we're going to see aren't we we're going to see what happens but the soap opera continues and the herns are playing it cool they're just going to say well we've got rematch you know we're going to activate the rematch clause look we all know in the boxing industry there's ways around everything unification for wilder that's a way around that, isn't it? Yeah, you can still do it rematch, but might want to fight Wilder first. Might lose against Wilder Ruiz, and where, where's Joshua then? We're out of the belts. That's when you'll get, we don't need a belt. We've won them all anyway. Belts are not important. Yeah, but there were Tyson Fury's belts, weren't they, really? So, for Tyson to come out and be so nice to Joshua, we all know it's bullshit, don't we? Because the other day you weren't saying things like that, so, come on. Play the game, Tyson. Play the game. But it's not my problem. Like I said, they're not. Uh, they're not going to be buying, buy, buying my house for me, are they? So they're not going to be setting me up for life, are they? So why should I fucking care? And why should you fucking care as well, you people, the boxing fans? Twenty pound pay per views. It used to be fucking fifteen quid, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? Twenty bastard pounds. Then you've got what's the other one? Uh, Eddie started it off at 15 quid with Audley Harrison and Hay, it's 20 quid now, and there's six of them a year, not three. And, and Dillian White is the 29th in the Eddie Earn era. So Dillian White's di pay per view 29. 29 fucking pay per views. Not fucking bad, that is it, eh? That is not bad, is it? That's a half a billion a pound industry. Half a billion. So. To Joshua and Eddie Earn and Sky and all them lot, do they all give a fuck about you, the fans? No. So don't feel sorry for them at all, because I don't feel fucking sorry for them. 
far as I'm concerned, they're all fucking pieces of shit, a lot of them. Shower of shit. You know, and I'm gonna go celebrate now with a few fucking beers and have a few friends with my mate Foggy. So, alright, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. I tell you what, there's a very nice chip just gone in there. Very nice. So, alright boys and girls. Boom!